now I want to go through the history on how this truth started. 1800, a literate blacksmith named Gabriel Prosser taught the slaves through inspiration of the Bible that we were God's people and should rebel against the tyranny of America. So that drawing right there is an illustration of Gabriel Prosser. That was in the 1800s. Then you had 1831. It says a slave named Nat Turner was called the prophet. A lot of people don't know that. That was his nickname, the prophet, because he was always talking about the scriptures. Okay, and raised a small slave rebellion based on Bible teachings and visions of war and bloody head. Many blacks today demonized this man who attempted to save them from oppression. Then you had in 1896, William Saunders Crowdy in Lawrence, Kansas. He established the Church of God and Saints of Christ. Although he taught blacks were God's people, he mixed a lot of Christianity in his teaching. You could Google this guy, and it tells you that it was still a lot of Christian stuff in there. Okay, under it, it says, F.S. Cherry set up the Church of the Living God. The pillar ground of truth for all nations. So even with this, he had all nations involved in this. This group was founded in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and later moved to Philadelphia. Theologically, the Church of the Living God mixed elements of Judaism and Christianity and the town movement. So he had all races in there, so that he was still kind of off to. 1920, you have uh, Wentworth uh, A. Matthews. He established the Commandment Keepers in Harlem, New York. He primarily based his learnings on so-called Jewish people he rejected all New Testament writings. That was him right there. 1929, you have Israel Ben Newman and Mordecai Herman. They established the Moorish Zionist Temple of the Moorish Jews. They also followed white Jewish teachings, okay? Under that, you're in 1930, you had Arnold Josiah Ford. He and a small group of black Jews went to Ethiopia, where they participated in the coronation of Emperor Haile Selassie created a school and acquired 800 acres of land for the purpose of uniting black Jews and the diaspora with Ethiopians. He died there in 1935. So he also, he had a little bit of understanding, but not to the point of where we're about to get to. Okay, near the end of the civil rights movement, there were several prominent Israelite teachers. It was around this time the truth was being taught in a larger scale and in more areas. 1960, this is where we branch off from, right here. 1960, you had Eber Ben Ben Yemyan, also known as Abba Bivens. He was initially taught he was an Israelite by an ex-slave some many, many years early in the South. Bivens believed in the black Christ and on his way to New York, he had visited many Indian reservations and came to the scriptural conclusion that the so-called Indians were Israelites as well. He then came to New York and joined the commandment keepers. That's the group we saw up above with Matthews, uh, under Matthew, but rejected Matthew's teachings of Old Testament only. So they got into an argument and Bivens broke off from him. Uh, Bivens founded the Israeli school. He was the first to teach both the blacks and Indians of the Americas, uh, Israelites. So he was the first one that started to teach about the two kingdoms. 1963, you got Ben Carter, also known as Ben Ami. Uh, he led 300 Israelites from Chicago to Liberia and then to Demona, Israel. He established the African Hebrew Israelites he attempted to deliver his group from the curses of Deuteronomy 28 under the oppressive hand of America, but soon discovered that oppression followed him to Demona, Israel. Due to lack of citizenship, they lacked the medical and dental capabilities to properly take care of one another. So he agreed to support the Jewish Israeli military, allowing their young men to fight against the Palestinians in exchange for much needed supplies for their camp. He had to sell a soul just to get little thing, a few um, uh, dental benefits and medical benefits to help his people. He got a son of young men in their war. 1965, William A. Lewis taught a congregation in Grand Junction, Michigan. 1970, Hulan Mitchell Jr. This is the one they have on the biography channel. Where many of your, your mothers and fathers will Google Israelites. This guy pops up first. He, this dude was a murderer. It says 1970, Hulan Mitchell Jr a.k.a. Yahweh ben Yahweh, established the nation of Yahweh, proclaimed himself God, the Son of God. Sound familiar that somebody's doing today? He and many of his followers were arrested for murder, racketeering, arson, and many other crimes to establish themselves in various states. He was found guilty of these crimes in 1991 and died of colon cancer in prison. Next, 1973, you had Moshe ben Karim, a.k.a. also known as Masha. 
He uh, was chosen to carry on to teaching in Abba Bivens' place. Bivens had died, okay? He was fighting with the Muslims on the street because you had two groups that was teaching on the streets at this time. You had the Muslims, that's why if you look at the movie Malcolm X, remember you see Malcolm on a ladder teaching? And you got, uh, you had Sharpton playing a preacher. Bobby Seale. Bobby Seale. Right. right. So during that time, you also had Bivens was on the street teaching. They used to get into confrontations about the scriptures. And Bivens didn't play. He'd fight you quick. So the Muslims had given him, beat him down real, real bad and put him in a hospital. In the hospital, he had set up Mashat and um, Yagpav to take over the teachings of the school. And Bivens had passed away. So I'm going to read this right here. 1973, Moshe Ben Karim, a.k.a. Mashal, was chosen to carry on teaching in Abba Bivens' place where Peter Sherrod, also known as Yaquab, that's Yaquab on the right, Masha is in the green. It says they took over the Israeli school, adding UPK, Universal Practical Knowledge. Later in the 70s, they were helped by five other brothers, and they were called the Seven. They were offered, now this is the key point, they were offered several million dollars by the Rosicrucians to teach a more Christian or Jewish message of unity for all mankind. As some of the other Israelite camps teach, Masha and Yankrop refused because they had given them. They, yeah, y'all, we, y'all we were there when they were doing this. They had handed them a, bl- a blank check and said, just write in whatever number you want and it's yours. They said no and gave it back to them. There was a um, a coup against Masha. There was one Passover. There was a there was going to be a hit put out on Masha. They were offered several million dollars by the Rosicrucians to teach a more Christian or Jewish message of unity to all mankind. And somebody told them something like this. Masha and Yankov refused because they had given them a They had handed them a blank check and said, just write it whatever number you want. And they said, no, they gave it back. There was a, um, a coup against Masha. There was one Passover. There was a. There was going to be a hit put out on Masha. You have many of the brothers in the back that denied they were involved in it. I was. We were in the council, so we know exactly what was going on. But what happened was what Masha did. Because everybody denied it. No, we wasn't trying to overthrow. He wasn't trying to overthrow you. What Masha did was raise up a lot of the young men. Um, He says a Christian Jewish message means Negroes will remain on the bottom of society and the full truth will never be taught. So now that's we want to pause right there at that history there. And I want to go to the photos. Go to the photos now. Okay, this is on 125th Street. This is the address. 1 West 125th Street. The top floor is where Masha and Guy Kropnam had the school at. Okay, this is from, they had it from the 70s, from this time. Right, that was the room. Room 211. That's when the, we had came in. Okay, it was room 211 on the second floor. That right there leads up to those doors, the 211. Right. That's the story. Those are the, the infamous stairs that we talk about. We, we used to tell you our stories. If you got on that, if you went in there and tried to rebel against the, the elders, there were seven of them, run your mouth, they would throw you down these stairs. You was going down head first. Right. And yeah. they, they were serious. Dead serious. It got to a point where they didn't have to jump over the table. They said, brothers, throw that nigga out right there. You have big, five big black brothers. Pick your behind up and throw you down those stairs. You hear. not take no mess. This is Lahab, the one in the black. Right. Which one? This, this one here, that's Lahab. That's Lahab, right. Okay. The next one is Masha. Right. He was the head of the school. Masha. I can't see what that is. That that's Ariel behind. That's Ariel in the back. Right. You do have Kazakh. He's yeah, way in the back. Right. 
Well, you can barely see him, but that's because I. Is that Sadia? Right, no, 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 no. listen. Oh. See, what, see, see what Larry Eye is with the, with the white turban on? Go back, right. Now, right right next to him. Right there. That's Kazak. Okay. The right, next that's one, Kazak. that's Kazak. And the next one, that's Yeshaya. Oh, that's Yeshaya. That's Yeshaya. The next one is Yaikwa. That's Ariel's father. Right, that's Ariel's father. And the next one on the far right is Shaw. Yeah. No. That's a Shaw right there. Right there. That's the seven. That's the seven that taught all these different. Yeah. One, two, three, four, four five, five, six, seven. That's the seven leaders that taught all these Israelites that you see out here. The bulk of them come from the understanding that these men set up. So don't let nobody. You got brother talking about, oh, I taught Nathaniel. You know, these was these, our these teachers the right there, us. the ones we named. That's it. When don't I'm, let nobody gas you up in your ear. No, I, I taught. No, they didn't. Yes. No, the ones that died is Yaquab and Masha. Yaquab died the night of the split, and Masha died sometime later. Okay, so those are the seven elders that taught us through, and Bivens taught them. Okay, actually, let me go back to Yaquab for a second, because Bivens did not drop the understanding to Yaquab. Yaquab was in the Midwest, and he was in a bar, and he said a black man, he said back then, he said they all had six shooters on, on their hips back in the West. Because if you ever met him, he, they were dressed like cowboys. Yeah. He said a dude walked in, and he said he was at the bar, and the brother said he said the brother's afro went right into his beard, and he said it was perfect. He said not one strand of hair was out of place, and he said the brother said, "Hey, you see all these black people in this bar right here?" And Yaakov goes, "Yeah." He says all of them in here is Israelites. He said Israelites. He says Israelites. And Yaakov said he started looking around. He said the brother walked up and walked out the bar. Yaakov said he ran behind him to ask him more questions. And he said he never saw the guy again. He couldn't, he didn't know if he went to the left or right. He was looking, he didn't see him. So he said he thinks that it was an angel. That was his thought to us. He said, I can't prove it, but that was my thought. So then when he came up this way, that's when he met Bivens. And Bivens expounded more of the understanding to him. Ariel is the one in the red. You got Masha with the the black leather hat, with the black. black with the, the teeth on it. All right, that's my Shah. On the far right is Shah. Yes. Now on the far left, go to the far left, that's Ramila. He's the one that taught Deacon Asaph initially. Go to the far left. The brother right, right, right there. there. Right there. Right Asaph? Yep. That's the brother that taught Asaph right there. I'm going to show y'all something. Right here. Y'all see this young man right here with the blue? This man right here with the blue, that's who y'all call the God sent comforter, who says that um, an angel came from heaven and taught him the scriptures. No, that's not true. That's Tazadakia. He was in a school with us. He came in when he was about 15 years old, learning the scriptures with the rest of us. We were already in our right. 20s. Yeah. He came in like he was about, no, he's younger than them. He's about 10 years younger than us, now I think about it. Because the article said that he's 37 today, which means he's about, it was a good 10 year difference. Okay, so this is who many of the brothers and sisters are calling the God sent comforter of today. Now, when we knew him, he was a good brother. He was decent. He used to help y'all stuff, read for him on the videos and all that. Okay, where this stuff came in today, remember the same thing about we read about the Rosha Crucians with the blank checks, offering money? When we when the split happened, all that's what occurred, what you see today. And you may ask, well, what happened? What happened to cause all this separation? The spirit of Negro dumb. The spirit of Negro dumb set in. Many of us get disgruntled because what's the main thing that makes Negroes mad? Money. 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 Um, there was a um, a coup against Masha. There was one Passover, there was a there was gonna be a hit put out on Masha. Late, but we gotta do it, you know, when we can do it. 
Tonight I'll be joined by special guest Abu Kamar. We're taking a deep, deep, deep dive into One West Hebrews Light History. We have uncovered a book that is apparently written by the founder of One West Hebrew Israelism, Abba Bivens. This is crazy. This is crazy. You're going to see it here first. We're going to go deep. This is part of apologetics. We serve the underserved and we look into the overlooked. So are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? I'm going to take a trip to back, back to 1950. This is round two. 30 years later, another book that partially has the first book in it. <laughs> this is exclusive. If you care about this, want to know about this, Christian or Hebrew is alike, because I know a lot of you guys watch, and I don't mind being of service. The point tonight is not to say, oh, look, everything's different. We'll point out differences, but this is not about polemics. I gotchas. We're just trying to understand the truth. So we dig deep now. Strap yourself, Sim. I'm excited. It's gonna be a good one. We got a lot to show you guys. I'm telling you. Let's go.
Thank you.